Hey everybody, thanks for joining in tonight, and I want to start by asking you a question. Have you ever said that's not fair? Have you ever said that, why do they get the salary increase and I don't get it? Why did they get the promotion and I don't get the promotion? I deserve more than they do. Have you ever said that? Sure you have. I've said it. We've all said it. It's just human nature. I remember uh, years ago before I was married, I was dating Diane. I was working for a uh, contractor and we built the first condominiums out on South Seas Plantation on Sanibel Island. I wanted to leave early one day and go see Diane. And I asked the boss, hey, can I get off early? And he said, no. And I said, will you let so-and-so leave a couple days ago early? And he goes, I don't care. I said, well, that's not fair. He said, I don't care that it's not fair. Get back up there and start working on that tie beam. So sometimes we look at situations and they're not fair. And that's exactly what the parable of the vineyard or the labors in the vineyard is about. After an encounter with the rich young ruler, Jesus detected this kind of attitude in Peter. What am I going to get? Uh, this is not fair. In fact, we know in Matthew chapter 19, verse number 27, that Peter said to him, we've given up everything to follow you. What will we get? In other words, Lord, I have given up everything in my life to become one of your most dedicated followers. Look how dedicated I am. I gave up my fishing business. And, and what's my reward going to be? The rich young ruler walked away with all of his money. What am I going to get out of my service to you? And this is exactly why Jesus taught this parable on the labors in the vineyard. In fact, he is teaching us about the kingdom of God. Now, let me remind you that there were no labor unions in biblical times. There wasn't a, a, a steel union or a plumber's union, no labors at all. So what happened was day laborers would come to the marketplace early in the morning hoping for work. And the day laborers that worked for any owner or any business owner would be paid at the end of the day. So we have two groups of people in this particular parable. First, we have men that were hired early in the morning. And we, we read that in uh, chapter 20, verse number 1 and 2 of Matthew's Gospel. For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire workers for his vineyard. He agreed to pay them a normal daily wage and sent them out to work. So notice he hires a group of people very early in the morning and notice that they agreed on or negotiated a wage that they would be paid before they went out into the fields. And then we see a second group of people that were hired later in the day. That's in verse number three. At nine o'clock in the morning, he was passing, that is the landowner was passing through the marketplace and saw some people standing around doing nothing. So he hired them, telling them that he would pay them whatever was right at the end of the day. So notice here that the harvest was so big and the work was so great that he had to come back in the morning at 9 a.m. and hired other workers. But we know in verse 5 and 6 that he came back again at noon and hired people. He came back again at 3 p.m. and 5 p.m. and hired more people. These people that were hired later in the day, they had no negotiated contract. They didn't know what they were going to be paid. They just chose to trust the landowner that he would take care of them, and they went out in the field to work. Now we see the 20, or chapter 20, verse number 8. That evening he told the foreman to call the workers in and pay them, beginning with the last workers first. When those hired at 5 o'clock were paid, each received a full day's wage. Okay, so here we see that the landowner chose to pay the workers in reverse order. We're going to start paying the guys that started late in the day and worked the least amount of hours. And we're going to go all the way back to those that worked all day long and were hired in the morning. And notice that he paid everyone the same wage. It was a Daenerys of silver. Those who no negotiated and had a contract and worked longer were upset. They complained. That's not fair. That's not, that's not equity. 
I mean, we've been working all day long and we agreed on a wage and these guys came at nine or noon or three at five and they get paid the same as us. So what do you think Peter was thinking now? Hold on just a second. I'm one of your first disciples. I've been following you longer than all of these other people. I gave up my fishing business to follow you. Uh, what am I going to get in return? What are you going to do for me? And what Jesus was basically saying is, Peter, you get what you bargained for. So how about this? How about we don't negotiate a contract? How about you just serve me and you trust me and let me bless you and take care of you? You, you see, this parable is not teaching us that blessings and rewards will be the same. They won't be the same. Some people are going to get different blessings and we're going to get different rewards when we get to heaven. It teaches us that if we trust God and we serve God with the right attitude and we love Him with all of our heart, soul, and mind and we employ our gifts and our resources, that He will reward us accordingly. I will tell you, my friend, God is fair and God will take care of everything in the end. You see, God doesn't treat people the same. It took me a while to understand that in my, in my Christian journey. He doesn't treat everyone the same. He does bless people differently. And sometimes, uh, you know, sometimes he, he, he does things for people that he doesn't do for other people. So we have to stop negotiating with God. Stop trying to make Christianity a game show where God is Monty Hall and we're trying to make a deal with him. Let's do the right thing with the right attitude and again, believe that he will take care of us. So what is your perspective on serving? That's a good question. What is your perspective on serving? Because I think Peter had the wrong perspective at that time. He had the wrong perception of what serving the Lord was about. He was kind of making it about him and his rewards only. And maybe that's why he was always tooting his own horn and, you know, I'm not going to deny you, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So let's, let's look at uh, three or four takeaways from this parable of the uh, labors in the vineyard. Uh, takeaway number one, check our attitude. It's important that we monitor our attitude. Do we have the right attitude? Are we serving the Lord for the right reasons? Do we need a contract with God? I mean, either we're going to trust God to be fair and equitable, or we're not going to trust God, okay? So again, don't treat God like it's some kind of a television game show. Number two, stop focusing on other people. Because we know in Matthew uh, chapter 19 that Peter had just watched the rich young ruler turn and walk away from Jesus with all of his money. Hey, Jesus, I gave up my fishing business. Hey, what's in it for me? Remember the question he asked in chapter 20? So let's not focus on other people. Let's keep our eyes on Jesus. Let's serve him with all of our heart. Let's serve him with excellence. And again, let's trust him to be fair to us. Uh, the third uh, takeaway is resist jealousy. We don't need to be jealous. Uh, you know, we read there in, in chapter 20, verse number 15, uh, is it against the law for me to do what I want to do with my money? Should you be jealous because I'm kind to others? Wow. God is saying, hey, I'm the one, I'm the source of blessings. I can do whatever I want with my blessings. And I'm going to bless people differently. And you shouldn't let it bother you. And you shouldn't be focusing on people and being, and being you know, poisoned by jealousy. And then last of all, but not least of all, accept the sovereignty of God. God is sovereign. You know, I think about Exodus chapter 33, verse number 19, and, and I memorize this verse. I will show mercy to anyone I choose, and I will show compassion to anyone I choose. What was God saying there? He's saying, I'm sovereign. I'm God. I have autonomy. I have all authority. I can do what I want, when I want, with whom I want, with whatever I want. God doesn't answer to a committee. He doesn't answer to a board. God is in charge. So again, uh, this is not a parable about equality. It's not a parable about eco uh, economics, although those things are important. It's really a parable about the kingdom of God and our attitude toward serving Jesus and making sacrifices for Him. So my friends, let's keep our eyes on Jesus. Let's continue to employ the gifts and the talents that he gave to us. Let's continue to use our resources to advance the kingdom of God. 
Don't ever shy away from giving your time, your talent, your money to advance the kingdom. And because of His grace and mercy, I promise you, we will receive much more than we deserve. That's a good word, isn't it? Look forward to seeing you this Sunday, 9, 15, 11, 15, right here in the big house. Have a great week.